The following is a hoop ball presentation. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. September 30th, 2020, NBA Christmas morning. The finals begin tonight. The NBA finals just a few hours away. Just a few hours away. You can feel it in your, in your veins, in your bones. You can feel it. It's a 6 o'clock start Pacific time. It's actually about as late as they go. Typical Lakers uh, prime time slot that uh, they'll just continue rolling right over. Lakers currently the four and a half point favorite, a line that has been coming down by a very small amount with a total of two seventeen and a half. We're going to be spending the majority, the vast majority of today's podcast previewing the NBA finals. A uh, very, very a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of news out of the NBA world, but at this point, we can mostly ignore it because today is actually a, a pretty spectacular day if you're uh, if you're into playoff anything because there are eight playoff baseball games, which will be a record. That'll be the first time that that's ever happened. It might be the only time that that's ever happened, or this week might be the only time that ever happens, depending on what baseball does with their postseason next year. So record-breaking day. On the MLB front, baseball playoffs, basketball playoffs happening at the same time. Uh, pretty sweet. Welcome to Fantasy NBA Today. Uh, hold the fantasy. Did I say that right? I started to think about something else as I was saying the name of my own show, and I may have actually gotten the name wrong. Welcome to Fantasy NBA Today. Hold the fantasy. I am Dan Bespris, your host. Dan Bespris is that that's about where I'm at on Twitter. D-A-N-B-E-S-B-R-I-S. You can also just Google search Dan from Hoopball should you be locating us here for the first time, although that would be somewhat surprising given the weirdness of this 2020 year, season, whatever the hell you want to call it. I think most of you guys listening to the show are longtime listeners, but I do want to try to treat every episode as though someone is listening for the first time. So welcome if that happens to be you. We talked a little bit of fantasy on yesterday's show. It's the first time we've even really touched on it in the better part of a month at this point. And today we pivot back into, for the most part, the NBA Finals and and betting on it. I want to do the, the tiny bit of news out of the NBA world first, and that broke this morning. And that is that Doc Rivers is set to meet with the Philadelphia 76ers. I think it is later this week. Do you have a day on that yet? Uh, no, we don't have a day on that yet. So he's now in the running for the Sixers job, which previously it sounded like they might want to go with Ty Lu, And then before that, it sounded like they were going with Mike D'Antoni, but they're at least leaving their options open. You have some pretty credentialed head coaches now that are in the running for a few key jobs. We'll see if anybody goes kind of a new direction. Brooklyn went a new direction with Steve Nash. I think they're hoping for the Steve Kerr effect there. But now you've got the uh, the Pels job, which is a neat young team. You've got the Sixers job, which is a team that is already quite good. And then the Clippers job, of course, that just came open. We're talking about Doc Rivers, which is a, a championship contender right out of the chute. So there's some pretty amazing things floating around. Eh, that's not it. There's other stuff. But like you think about some of the premier openings right now, that is... That is significant. Those are significant gigs we just mentioned. But that's your only real news. I mean, let's say Doc Rivers gets hired by the 76ers. I don't know that much changes there. I don't know about Ty Lue changing a whole lot of things in terms of how fantasy value works. The only one where if if that particular guy comes in, you reassess fantasy stuff is Mike D'Antoni. Because you know he's going to create a, a uh, ball handler-centric offense. And how the hell he would do that in Philadelphia, I don't know. They'd, they'd probably have to move some... Uh, personnel around, but that's the one where you'd want to do a little bit more of a deep dive on on what it means on the fantasy side. But let's let's turn our attention almost immediately here to the finals. I, I mean, we've been waiting for this for a couple of days. The Heat wrapped up their series with the Celtics on Sunday. We had a couple of days off. I think there's one day off between almost every game in this series. They go Wednesday, Friday. When the hell's the next game after that? Is there a two-day break in there? 
Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, and then I think there might actually be a two day break in there. They in the middle of next week. So if they if they go longer than a sweep, which it almost definitely will, then uh then that next one will will they they get a two day break. The the series, all right. So we've been touching on it over the last couple of days. I, I've tried to avoid getting too deep into the details, mostly so that I would have content for today's show. But now there's nothing holding us back. So we're gonna we're gonna hit on everything. We've got lines for all sorts of stuff. We already talked about the line for the game, but there's all these prop bets. There's futures. There's uh, exotics. There's all sorts of crazy stuff available for this this finals matchup so we're just going to talk about all of it and have a little fun today why not right let's dive on in first of all all of the lines all of the bets that we're mentioning are brought to you by our buddies at mybookie.ag if you hear anything you like on this podcast that's the place to get down on it mybookie.ag is the website go there sign up promo code is hoopball you can enter that on the third page of sign up the first page yeah, you pick your username and password. Second page, you enter your uh, contact information. And the third page, you punch in promo codes. That's where you punch in HoopBall, which unlocks a 100% free play deposit match bonus with rollover. Or you can enter that code and save that promo for later if you so desire. You can actually decline the 100% if you want. Drop in your own money. Bet it. If you win a whole bunch, you can uh, withdraw anytime you want without the rollover which uh, right now we're doing little bits of. Uh, they, my bookie keeps running these incredible odds boost promos, and we just keep taking advantage of it. We won 45 bucks on uh, the Chiefs, where we didn't even have to think about it. And then uh, basically anybody that just bet straight through the odds boost over the weekend won somewhere between 80 and $120 for, again, literally doing no handicapping and just taking advantage of lines that they've swung in our favor. So make sure that you have an account already going the next time one of these opportunities pops up. Just get it ready to go. Open it up, put in whatever it is. Uh, minimum credit card deposit is 45. Minimum Bitcoin deposit is 25. It's, it's so little. You can do more if you want. I don't care. But open up an account at mybookie.ag. Promo code again is HoopBall. And I'll tell you a little bit more about our other sponsors later in the podcast. I want to dive right into this thing right now. We mentioned the Lakers as a four and a half point favorite that actually uh, came down from five. There is a lot of action on Miami here over the last couple of days. And, you know, one of the best ways I've found at least to, to handicap a line is to watch what the talking heads are saying, okay? Because then you can get an idea of what the general public is likely to do with a particular ball game. You can then assess what that means based on line movement. And this is, you know, provided you don't have an in to a sports book to know who's wagering on what side. And oddly enough, over the last couple of days, a lot of experts are on the heat. A lot of them. Uh, this is this is not the same as what we saw in the last round, where pretty much everybody had the Celtics and pretty much everybody had the Lakers in the conference finals. Prior to that, there was actually some some bouncing around. You know, early on, uh, we talked about this a couple days ago. There was a there was a belief that Portland could beat the Lakers, and there was a strong belief that the Rockets could beat the Lakers. Uh, L.A. just trounced both those teams. There was not quite the same strong belief that the Nuggets were going to beat the Lakers. It seemed like after those first two rounds, people were like, okay, the Lakers have answered the bell. They're ready to go. Yes, the Nuggets are fighting, but that previous round was more about the Clippers' failings than it was about the Nuggets' achievements, which... Right or wrong, that was the perception. And sure enough, the Lakers beat the Nuggets and and continued on. And I know what you're saying, or maybe you're thinking, Dan, but the series price is Lakers minus 360. So they very clearly are the betting favorite to win the series. Yes, that is true. But in looking at what the media landscape at large is saying, folks are giving the Heat 
a very strong chance of winning this series. So let's start with the big umbrella and work our way down to the individual game. Series price, we just mentioned. Lakers minus 360, Heat at plus 290. I think, if you're looking at the series, there are actually better ways to do so. And I mentioned this with my buddy Sam Paniotovich on the Chicken Dinner podcast yesterday. He was kind enough to let me guest on that one. If you think the Heat are going to win this series, you probably also think that Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler are going to have to have big series. I saw someone talking about how Goran Dragic and Tyler Hero are dark horses to win the finals MVP. I don't think there's even a remote chance that Tyler Hero wins finals MVP. He had one big game in the last round against Boston and then was fine in the other ones. But if you were to assign an Eastern Conference MVP, it wouldn't have been him. That's the type of thing that someone has to do multiple times to get consideration for a finals MVP. This isn't, to me, like the Andre Iguodala year where... Voters just like, yeah, you know, defensively he was incredible on LeBron, so we got it, and, and he helped. He made that motor run. Um, so let's let's give it to him instead of one of the premier scorers on the Warriors. That's not going to happen with the Heat this year. It's going to be Butler or Adebayo, uh, unless Dragic averages like twenty five and eight for the series, and I don't think that's happening. The Lakers defensively are too good to let that type of thing happen. The only guys that are going to hurt the Lakers, and frankly. The one guy that I that I think could actually create a ton of issues is Jimmy Butler because of his ability to get fouled. Jimmy Butler is a plus 800 bet to win the finals MVP. And Bam Adebayo is a plus 1,200 bet wager to win the finals MVP. Goran Dragic is at plus 3,000. That's a big-time long shot. He would have to have a, a truly massive series. And the Lakers, I think... I would assume they've had quite a lot of time to watch tape and game plan for what Goron does best. And what he does best is get into the paint. He's been uh, leveling off. Remember he got off to that incredibly hot start in the postseason and just was making everything, and then the Celtics were like, no, you know what, we're going to change the way we defend you a little bit. And then he's, not surprisingly, cooled off quite a bit. So in my estimation... If you're looking at taking the t- the Heat at plus 290 for the series, you're actually better off probably splitting that unit on Butler and Adebayo for finals MVP. So that kind of averages out to about a 10 to 1 wager. The only difference, in my estimation, between taking the Heat at plus 290 and taking the Butler-Adebayo pair for finals MVP at basically plus 1,000 is Goran Dragic. Is Dragic worth the difference between a a bet that's roughly plus 300 and a bet that's roughly plus 1,000? Is he the difference between a a $700 difference? Would you pay... Let me ask you this another question. Would you pay $700 to remove Goran Dragic from the equation? Because he's the only other guy on the board that has a chance to win finals MVP if the Heat win the finals, besides Jimmy and Bam. It's not going to be Tyler Hero. Uh, It's not going to be Jay Crowder. It's not. Because they just, as good as Hero was in that series against Boston, they defended him strangely. He's not, he's not your finals MVP. Sorry. I know he had 19 and 7 in their closeout game, but Bam was more important in that one. Jimmy Butler was more important in that one. It's not going to happen. It's not going to be Hero. It's Bam, Jimmy, or Dragic. Dragic is the guy with the opportunity because he's out there and because he's out there to to make bigger plays and he has the bigger name. They're not going to do this. Like, if this was a dynasty, if this was like the Heat's third straight finals appearance and Jimmy and Bam have already won a finals MVP, then you might look at it like, oh, well, then maybe they'll give it to one of these other guys. If that team wins, the storyline is that Jimmy Butler galvanized a group of youngsters and tough guys and brought them to a a bubble finals and won it. He'll win it. It almost doesn't matter what he does in this this finals. It's going to be Jimmy Butler unless he's awful or unless Bam goes huge. I just, I don't see a universe where it's not one of those two guys. I, you know, 
Nothing is guaranteed, but again, that's why I bring up the idea of would you pay $700 on your wager to eliminate Goran Dragic from the equation? And the answer is no. It's a much better value to bet the butler out of bio M- uh, finals MVP pair than Heat at plus 290. The other side of that is, for the Lakers, LeBron is a minus 130 bet to be the finals MVP, and Anthony Davis is a plus 210 bet. I actually think there's a much more reasonable chance that those two guys, uh, like, I don't know which one of those two guys would end up getting the finals MVP. I think the, the, the voters would like to give it to LeBron, but I also think that Anthony Davis can destroy Jay Crowder which is what's going to be happening a lot. And if Miami goes to their gimmicky zone stuff, Anthony Davis will just be sitting at the free throw line, hitting uncontested free throws all game long. So there's a very real chance that AD has a monster of a series. And even if LeBron is the engine that makes that team go, if AD's numbers are so eye-popping, he could actually win finals MVP. So with those two guys, I don't think there's as much locked in. Like, it's going to be one of those four guys that I just mentioned. But in terms of how confident am I in one or the other, I'm not. And you need to be able to counterbalance the Butler out of bio bet, if that's what we're making, against one bet on the Lakers' side. We don't want to split our cash between four guys. That's a losing proposition. You also don't want to split your bet between all four of those dudes to win finals MVP. That's a losing proposition. There's a VIG built in there. But, and this is what I mentioned with Sam yesterday uh, on that chicken dinner pod, if anybody happened to, to check that one out, the Lakers at minus 360 to win the series does actually counterbalance the Butler Adebayo MVP wager. And... If you think Miami wins game one, you could actually hold off on that bet and take Lakers after a game one loss. Well, we'll get to that in a minute here. The reason I bring this up is that Lakers at minus 360. So let's say you put 360 bucks down, and we're just using that because it's easy number to track. If the, if the Lakers win the series at that point, you would uh, that 360 would become 460. You'd win $100. And if you split a unit on Butler and Adebayo that $100 would disappear. So if you put a unit on the Lakers at minus 360 and a half unit on Butler and Adebayo to win the finals MVP and the Lakers win the series, you break even. If, however, you you make those same three wagers and let's say Butler wins the MVP, that's a $400 winning. You actually end up 40 bucks. And if Adebayo wins it, that's a $600 winning if you're doing a half unit in, in, this, in our hypothetical here. And that's a $240 profit. So there's actually an opportunity here to basically guarantee a profit minus the Goran Dragic factor. That's the way you get screwed in this. So we're talking about, uh, unfortunately, you do have to lay a little bit on the Lakers to get that series price. But the only way that this one screws you is if the Heat win the series and Goran Dragic wins finals MVP. Otherwise, you could actually counterbalance these and create an interesting middle, which I kind of like. Also floating around out there, if you want to get into some of the weirder uh, series-related bets, is that you can bet over at my... This is all at my bookie, by the way. You can bet the length of the series and the winner in a certain amount of time. So you can wager that the series goes four, five, six, or seven games. You can bet which team wins on which game. I'm not getting into the team winning on which game. I I do think that each team wins at least two games in this series. I think it's going to be a long one, Uh, probably somewhat similar to what the Heat and Celtics had going on in the previous round. I don't know if it goes all seven because I do think, and this will be the, the next topic we discuss here on the podcast, I do think that ultimately the Lakers have the better tools in this series. The question is, how does each team actually use what they have? So I like the idea of the series ending in six or seven games, which, by the way, you could actually put a unit on each of those, and, uh, if it, and, you could, and you'd be up if it went to either of them, because they're both, they're both over two-to-one odds. 
the way, of course, that one goes down the tubes is if one of these teams wins the, ga- wins the series in five games, which if the series ends quickly, it's the Lakers. If the series ends fast, it's L.A. winning the series. There's, there's almost no way the Heat win this thing in four or five games. I could see the Lakers maybe winning it in five. If it's going six or seven, to me, it, it, at that point, you really don't know who's winning the set. So, I don't, I, again, that's why I don't really like betting on which team is going to win the series, but I do think that there's some kind of value in maybe throwing a halfer on the series ending in six and a halfer on the series ending in seven and uh, basically expecting that it's going to take the Lakers a couple of games to make the right adjustments. But so far, of all the things I've talked about, splitting the series price against the finals MVP is probably the most interesting pairing of that group. There's also another way to create kind of a built-in hedge, which is the following. If you you bet the Butler-Adebayo finals MVP numbers at plus 800 and plus 1,200, and you don't want to lay minus 360 on the Lakers to win the series, but you do want to protect yourself against uh, how the series turns out, the... um, the Lakers are a minus 190 money line wager tonight. So let me explain how I got to that juncture in this discussion. Minus 190, obviously $170 cheaper than minus 360, which is the Lakers series price. If you're taking the Lakers on the money line tonight, what you're basically saying is, look, that's my way of not taking the Lakers to win the series but also being able to sort of prop myself against what might happen here on game one. Let me, let me explain further, because this is one where you kind of need to be able to like lay it out on a diagram in front, because we're getting into the weeds a bit. If the Lakers win tonight, the series price will change. The Lakers will get exorbitantly expensive, up 1-0. They'll go from minus 360 to probably like minus 600. If the Heat win tonight... The series price, you know, legitimately, I don't know where it goes from there because uh, I think the, they might still expect the Lakers to win the series, but that'll come down a lot from minus 360. You'll probably see it more in the minus 100 and something range with the Lakers as a very slight series favorite, even down 1-0. Mostly because of what we've seen the Lakers do down 1-0 in a couple of series already in this postseason. But what this does, by the way, it like uh, let's say Miami wins tonight, if you put a, a partial unit on the Lakers at minus 190 tonight and it loses, you can still take the Lakers on the series to hedge against your Adebayo and Jimmy Butler MVP wagers, or you could leave it alone at that point. Okay, you've lost your 1.9 units that you put on the Lakers' money line, but now you have... Uh, Jimmy at plus 800, you have Bam at plus 1,200 to be finals MVP with their team up one game to nothing. And if you wanted to, you could still probably get in on the Lakers at, you know, minus 150, 160, something like that. Which, by the way, yeah, if the first thought that popped in your head is, oh, that, if you add that to minus 190, you basically get to the Lakers series price before the series began. What we've done by taking the Lakers on the money line in this hypothetical scenario is we've actually just delayed having to make a final call on what we think is going to happen in the series, which is always helpful. If the Heat are up 1-0, don't you feel like you have a better idea of what's to come? You've just eliminated one game of uncertainty. So you can play these games once you have what you think is a pretty good bet. And the Bam Jimmy Finals MVP wagers to me are... Pretty interesting props. I like them. Before we break down tonight's game from an actual X's and O's standpoint, I want to remind everybody to check out our buddies over at Manscaped.com and the Lawnmower 3.0 with Pinch Free Technology. Waterproof. It's waterproof. You can take it into the shower with you. A 90-minute battery. You can shave the whole damn street. If you, I mean, if we could get within six feet of anybody else. Put it on a, uh, a a selfie stick and shave people from six feet away. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Well, I lost track of what I was talking about there. It's got a built-in LED as well, so you can illuminate what you're shaving. It's the Lawnmower 3.0 from Manscaped.com. Use coupon code HOOPBALL20 when you get yours today. Just get it. You like So many of us are using those cheapy $20 sideburn trimmers from uh, CVS and Rite Aid. Those things suck and they hurt. With all these damn uh, pinches and slices across my neck and... Anyway, the uh, the lawnmower is just so much better. It's so much better, guys. And you can get other stuff over at the website as well, but at least check out the lawnmower. It's the 3.0 version 3 HoopBall 20, 20% off free shipping over at manscaped.com. The game. Let's talk about the game. From a personnel standpoint, and th- this is, I think, actually a really critical distinction that needs to be made. From a personnel standpoint, the Lakers are better at the spots on the floor where LeBron James and Anthony Davis are located. You want to call that the three and the four because that's where they're starting. They're better at those spots. Um, I think technically Jimmy Butler is the starting small forward. Duncan Robinson is the starting shooting guard for Miami, we'll, so we'll roll with it that way. Um, so that makes LeBron better than Jimmy Butler and Anthony Davis better than Jay Crowder. The Heat are better at the other three spots on the floor. I think we could argue Goran Dragic is better than whatever the Lakers are calling their point guard. I guess it's KCP these days. Uh, Duncan Robinson, oh, you know what? Danny Green, vastly underrated is a better, to me, in my estimation, Danny Green's a better basketball player than Duncan Robinson. I know Duncan Robinson's a better shooter, but Danny Green consistently has some of the best metrics in the NBA, year after year after year, and nobody seems to care. And then Bam Adebayo, obviously far better than JaVale McGee or Dwight Howard, whoever the Lakers want to play at center. Uh, And then if they move guys around, then that changes a little bit. So a lot of people, I think, are assessing this series, and they're like, well, Miami's better at more positions on the floor, so they should be able to win this series. It doesn't really work that way. Because there's the gap in how good certain players are is a big deal. And the matchups, just the the schemes that the two teams are running is actually a really big deal. And this is why, I I mean, deep dive, you you do the whole damn thing. Uh, There are a lot of things that point to each team in this series. But ultimately, I do think the Lakers win the finals. And here's why. Most of the things that the Heat were running defensively, the Lakers have already seen. Meaning they've already seen a zone. They've already seen teams attempt to wall off the paint against them. And they've they've built counters to those already meaning the Lakers got the sort of battle testing they needed against what the Heat have been doing to this point in the playoffs in their previous rounds. The Heat actually haven't really seen a defense like the Lakers. The closest thing they saw was probably Milwaukee, but the Bucks are notorious for not really covering the three-point line, and it killed them. And then on the other side, Milwaukee couldn't do anything on offense. So even though you know, the, the Bucks actually were not that terrible defensively against Miami in that series. They actually weren't that awful. Like, the Heat were getting some good shots. They were making a ton of three-pointers, and they were sort of, they burned the Bucks in the exact way that Milwaukee was allowing them to burn them. If the Bucks could get anything going on offense in that series, they would have won it. They would have. Like that, and I know this seems insane because the Heat were clearly the better team in every game of that series, and I am not disputing that. Miami outplayed Milwaukee in every single game of that series. They just had one where Giannis went down and, and the Heat sort of took their foot off the gas a little bit, but... It's it's important to note that the Bucks lost that series because they couldn't score. They had no counter for what the Heat were doing 
on defense. The Heat won the first game 115-104 with a second-half push. Uh, Jimmy Butler had 40 in that one. He went completely nutso. But, like, the Bucks just, they couldn't do anything. They had 19 turnovers in that first game. They actually hit their three-pointers. Didn't matter. They missed a ton of free throws. They got out-rebounded because they couldn't, all of their shots were were goofy and guys weren't in their right spot. So, like, Milwaukee had 24 points in the paint in that first game against Miami. 24! If they had their normal ability, if they were getting anywhere near the bucket, they would have won that series. But they didn't have the right counters. They just never did. We've already seen the Lakers figured out how to counter the teams that are playing sort of a sag-off, pack-the-paint, pre-rotate kind of defense. They've already beaten it. I get it. The Heat have a better big man defensively than the Nuggets do in running that type of defense. Um, the Heat are also easier to defend than the Nuggets. The Nuggets are probably the toughest offense the Lakers are going to have to deal with to this to, in the playoffs. Just the most uh, sort of unguardable. Right? Like, there's there's almost nothing you can do against Denver. They're going to get what they want. They're going to get Jokic in a big mismatch. They're going to get Jamal Murray in a big mismatch. The Heat don't have, actually, believe it or not, they don't really have the mismatch creators. It's a very different offense. There's a lot more motion in the Heat offense. And for the Lakers, not allowing guys to get to the rim is pretty much the only thing they need to worry about against Miami. Jimmy Butler does his damage on his way to the bucket. He gets fouled. He gets layups. Goran Dragic does his damage on the way to the bucket. He gets fouled. He gets other people involved. Tyler Hero does well if he can get to the rim or if he can set his feet and spot up to shoot. Jay Crowder is a spot up shooter. Adebayo is a good passer as a big man, but offensively he remains limited in a way where now he's going to be facing his toughest defenders in the playoffs so far. Um, I guess you could go way the hell back if you wanted to, uh, to the Heat's first series against the Pacers when they swept them. And, you know, Adebayo was a massive difference maker in that series, but largely on the defensive side. Largely on the defensive side. Um... From an offensive standpoint, he he didn't have to do uh, a boatload in that series against Indiana because they the Heat were just getting better shots every time down the floor. So, you know, this counts on both teams actually doing the right things here in Game 1. I do think that with the long layoff, both teams are going to have a couple of little tricks up their sleeve. You probably see with both teams kind of throwing their fastball in the first half. You probably see a lot of feeling out at the beginning of this ball game, where... The Lakers will kind of get an idea of what the the Heat are trying to run, and the Heat are going to get an idea of what the Lakers are trying to run. And I don't know, maybe Miami doesn't even run their little pack-the-paint defense against L.A. from the outset, but they did against Milwaukee, so there's nothing to make me think they won't run that against L.A. and force the Lakers to counter, but they've seen it. And then it'll come down to who can make some shots. So does the layoff hurt either of these teams? I think it actually helps Anthony Davis a lot because dude's dinged up right now. So, we loop all the way back around, this long analysis, you put it in the back pocket, and you say, okay, Lakers, can they cover four and a half? The answer is probably, but I don't think I'm making a wager on the side in tonight's ballgame. I also don't think I'm making a wager on the total in tonight's ballgame, and the only thing I was considering, as you guys heard before, was a money line wager to sort of hedge against our finals MVP stuff. What do I think is actually going to happen in this ballgame? Uh, I think the Lakers do win it. I think the Lakers win this first game. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty close one. But I think the Lakers also have the personnel we've seen to limit Adebayo, to limit Jimmy Butler. Got to keep him off the foul line. That's been a problem. That's the, that's like the big thing for the Lakers is they can't get into the bonus too early. They have the right personnel to limit Goran Dragic. And then offensively, I think, and everything is an I think at this point because we haven't seen a single game yet. But I do think that the Lakers have the right strategies now. They've already sort of run these sets to beat what the the Heat tried against Milwaukee. 
Miami's going to try to slow this game down. Lakers are going to try to speed it up. We'll get an idea by partway through which of those two teams is actually imposing their will as far as pace goes. And from there, we roll along. So, it, uh, do you want to put like a tenth of a unit on it just to have something going? Um, I guess you could probably say Miami catching four and a half points because to this point, they really, they're just not going away. And so if you, you take the team that's getting points in a situation like that, I do think the Lakers win the ball game straight up. Uh, and as the total goes, I think because the Lakers have mostly seen the defenses that they're going to see in this in this series with a few wrinkles, perhaps, I think this total goes over because they're going to get running. And when they can't run, they have stuff they can use against this type of attack. Uh, defensively, I think they're going to be feeling it out a little bit. Um, so I, I think it goes over by just a hair. So um, not a real play, maybe a tenth of a unit on both those things. Put like put like 2 or $3 on each of those wagers just to have something going in the ballgame tonight, which begins in eight and a half hours from right now. Can't wait. I cannot wait. Oh, it's going to be such a blast. All right, finals game one. It's coming up. It's coming up. This is Fantasy NBA Today. Hold the fantasy. I am Dan Bespris. We'll break it all down again tomorrow. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. Enjoy baseball all day, basketball tonight. So long. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.